you want to trap your opponent's queen early in the game, then there are two ways of doing it. And the first one is that you deflect this king, which is the queen's only defender, away from her. And the second idea is that you somehow try to get your opponent's queen out in the game so that your pieces can lay a good trap against her. So based on these two ideas, today I'm gonna show you eight different queen traps that you can play in your games when playing against beginners or intermediate players in rapid and blitz games. So let's have a look at the first trap. And this queen trap is seen in the England gambit. So as you all know, the England gambit starts with d4 and black gambits the pawn by playing e5. This is the England gambit and the idea is black is directly challenging the center and asking white to leave the control of the d4 square as well as black is opening the lines for his dark squared bishop. Now since white is getting a free pawn over here, most of the players don't mind taking this free pawn. So white plays d into e5. And now notice what has happened that if in future prospect, if my queen wants to capture this queen, then one pawn which was standing on the way has gotten off the file. So one obstacle has been cleared. And now here black plays bishop c5 taking immediate control of this square as well as keeping an eye on this most important square and the weakest square and that is the f2 square. And now white mostly here plays knight to f3, developing a piece from his king side, taking control of the center as well as providing defense to the e5 pawn. And now notice in this situation how your bishop is ready to capture this pawn over here and give a check to the enemy king. But it's too early to play this move. For you to capture free queen over here, so you need to clear up this pawn that's blocking your way. So that is why black plays d6, offering another pawn to white. Now since white's pawn are doubled on the e file, he thinks that capturing would be a good idea because he's getting another pawn for free as well as he will be getting rid of his doubled pawns on the e file. So black plays e into d6. Now notice that your own pawn is now out of the board, but here the opponent's pawn is blocking your queen's way to the opponent's queen. So let's lure this pawn to capture another free piece. So that is why black plays knight e7. Now here in this situation, most of the amateurs would love to capture this free piece over here. And when you offer a free piece like a knight right in the beginning of the game, it's very difficult for them to resist not taking this piece. So black plays d into e7. But by capturing this free piece, white has fallen into your trap. Because now you can give check to the king by capturing the f2 pawn. Notice the white king cannot come to this square because it's controlled by our queen. So he is now forced to take this bishop, making him leave the defense of his queen. And now black can easily win the queen by queen into d1. Now let's look at another queen trap in Tennyson Gambit. So white plays knight to f3, taking control of these two important squares in the center. And because white is controlling these two squares, black cannot play e5 because otherwise he will lose his pawn. So most of the times black will play d5. So black plays d5. And now the same idea again. If you want to capture this opponent's queen, you need to get rid of this two pawns over here. So that is why to deflect this pawn from the d file, white plays e4. And now we have entered the Tennyson gambit. And now here for black, it is very tempting to capture this pawn because not only he gets free pawn, but at the same time, he wins a tempo by attacking this knight over here. So most of the times black will capture this pawn. So black plays d into e4, attacking this knight over here. And now you will play knight to g5 attacking this pawn on e4, but most importantly, putting pressure on the black's f7 pawn over here. Now, majority times, black will defend this attacked pawn by a move like knight to f6, because not only it develops a king side piece, but also gives protection to this pawn as well as helps in controlling the center. And now, since you have successfully deflected this black pawn from the deep file, now you have to get rid of this pawn of yours. So that is why white plays d3, offering black another free pawn. And because black's pawns are doubled on the e file, he would love to get rid of his e4 pawn over here. So he plays e into d3. And now 
you have three options of capturing back but which would be the best move obviously you don't want to capture back with your pawn because then you'll be getting another pawn on the d file and you don't want that you want the file to be opened if you capture with your queen then there are high chances that the opponent will capture your queen and you will capture back and the entire idea of setting up this trap loses its value so the only best option is to capture back with your bishop so white plays bishop into d3 Notice this file is open and the bishop can move any time to one of these squares to give check to the enemy king. Also, by capturing with your bishop, you are now putting a lot of pressure on the h7 pawn. Notice how both of your pieces are eyeing this h7 pawn and here black gets very uncomfortable. So that is why he plays a normal looking move like h6. attacking this knight over here and asking him to retrieve back but here now white plays a surprising move and that is knight into f7 forking black's pieces and threatening to win material obviously black doesn't want to go down in material so he captures the knight with his king and now the king has left from his original square and is now no longer defending the black queen so all you need to do is find a way to give check to the black king so that the bishop gets away from this d file and you are able to capture this enemy queen so there are two ways of checking one is this square and other is this square so which square the bishop should go to so if the bishop goes to this square then it reveals a discovered attack to the enemy's queen so because the opponent doesn't want to lose his queen he will go back to his original square so this move will not work So the best move is bishop g6 check and here the black king cannot go back to defend his queen because those squares are now under our bishop's control so the king takes the bishop and now you can capture your opponent's queen let's go back a few moves here there are other options with black for defending this pawn over here and so instead of playing knight to f6 he can also decide to protect this pawn by a move like bishop f5 or f7 even these variations are possible but what happens in these variations if you are interested to know then i have already made a detailed video on the tennyson gambit the link of which is given in the description box kindly check that out now let's look at a queen trap in hector gambit white starts the game with knight to c3 taking control of these two important center squares and here black plays d5 and now since you want to get rid of these two pawns on the d file so that you can capture the opponent's queen you play the hector gambit by offering the pawn on e4 if black takes then now instead of taking back this pawn and wasting your time because notice your idea is to capture the opponent's queen you start preparing for the trap so you play bishop to c4 developing your bishop out to a square where it can eye on the weak f7 pawn in the enemy's territory Because you did not capture this e4 pawn, black thinks, let me play knight to f6, which will develop one kingside piece, control the center squares as well as help in protecting this undefended pawn. And now, since your bishop is already eyeing this square, it's time to get rid of this pawn over here, which blocks your way to the enemy's queen. So, you play d3. And the same idea that we discussed earlier, black wants to get rid of his double pawns on the e file. So, most of the times he will capture the e pawn over here. And now what should white do? Should he capture back with his pawn? Obviously not, because that will just block the d file. Should he capture back with the bishop? Of course not, because your bishop is doing the key important job of keeping an eye on this important square. Then should we capture back with the queen? obviously not because that might just lead to trade of queens over here so what should white play well white has two options either it can offer a free piece over here luring this pawn to take this free piece or he can just play normal developing move like knight to f3 and since this black's d pawn is going to fall off anyway so before dying he thinks let me capture another free pawn over here so he plays d into c2 And now this is the biggest mistake of the black because white can now play bishop into f7 check the king cannot come on this square because it's controlled by our queen so the king is forced to take this bishop and now you can easily capture the opponent's queen Now let's look at another trap in Albin counter gambit so you must have seen a lot of times players playing d4 then you play d5 and then you see a move like c4 which is a queen's gambit 
and here instead of accepting the gambit you will play albin counter gambit so you will play e5 that means you are offering your pawn to the opponent and because this pawn is for free most of the times your opponent will take it so white plays d into e5 and now instead of playing a move like this which will lead to trade of queens and you losing the castling right of your king you push your d pawn and get it on d4 and this pushing of the pawn makes white situation very uncomfortable because he cannot develop his knight on the c3 square and also he cannot push his e pawn further without getting captured and because white wants to get rid of this pawn a lot of times he will play a move like e3 so should you capture this pawn of course not because then the opponent will capture your queen and then you will lose the right to castle in the game so what should black do black will now check the white king with his bishop so black plays bishop b4 check now obviously this doesn't seem like a threat to white because he can easily block this check by any of his two pieces over here so let's say he blocks the check with his bishop and now because black's bishop is attacked white is expecting that black will capture this bishop and white will capture back and his game should be fine but instead what you are going to do is play another surprising move and that is d into e3 attacking this bishop and this weak square f2 now here the best move for white is to play f into e3 and then the game would be almost equal for both the players but a lot of players lose their calm when they are under pressure and because white is seeing that black is able to put a lot of pressure over here and he is also offering a free piece over here he doesn't mind taking this free piece and also get his bishop away from the attack of this pawn so he plays bishop into b4 and now because of white's last move he has fallen into black's trap because now black will try to deviate this king away from this square so that he loses protection of this queen so black plays e into f2 check notice the king cannot take this pawn because otherwise he will lose the queen so the king decides to come on this square and notice how the king and queen are aligned on the same diagonal which can be used by our bishop but if our bishop comes here and gives a check to the king then this check can be easily blocked by white's knight so first black will have to capture this knight so black takes this knight and promotes into what well most of you would be thinking queen but then if black promotes it into a queen then that would be a mistake because white can now capture our queen with a check our king will capture back and then white will be able to capture this newly promoted queen and the game would be slightly better for white because white has a bishop pair in this open position well as black only has one so obviously promoting into a queen would not be the best move so what should we promote into well we have to look for a forcing move and the forcing move is under promoting it into a knight because when the knight comes on the board he is giving a check to the white king so now white is forced to deal with this check so white captures the knight with his rook and now because the white's knight is gone off the board black can now play bishop g4 check forming a skewer and notice how white's queen is now under double attack by black's pieces white king moves back and now the queen is gone who like this video and subscribe to my channel and now let's look at a queen trap in the scandinavian defense white starts the game with e4 and you must have often seen black playing d5 offering a pawn over here so you should just take it because that gets his queen out in the board and now here you can attack the queen by the move knight to c3 now the best move for black over here is to take his queen back to the original position so that she doesn't get attacked more by the enemy pieces but here a lot of beginners and amateurs don't like to bring their queen back to its home square so you will often see players playing a move like queen to a5 and the idea is if white plays d3 or d4 then this queen would be pinning this knight to the white's king so what should white play now well nothing just focus on development so white plays knight to f3 and here black gets happier because now he can play bishop to g4 pinning the white's knight to the white queen and now you can play h3 attacking this bishop if the bishop goes back then you can also play a move like g4 
attacking this bishop again and notice how you can now fianchetto your own bishop control this beautiful diagonal over here and you can also castle on the queen side of the board now because black doesn't want to give a very good game to white so when you play a move like h3 there are high chances that instead of retrieving its bishop back over here black will just capture on f3 so what you do you capture back with your queen and now your queen is attacking this weak pawn over here and thereby threatening to capture this trapped rook in the next couple of moves obviously black cannot let that happen so he blocks the queen's attack by playing a move like knight to c6 and now white plays bishop b5 forking this knight to the black king now the knight is double attacked by white's pieces so black plays queen b6 to add defense to this knight now two of black's pieces are defending this knight and two of white's pieces are attacking this knight so what should white play well white here can create another threat in black's territory and that is knight to d5 knight to d5 attacks this black queen as well as attacks this c7 pawn threatening to four black's pieces over here if white captures our bishop over here then he loses the queen by knight into c7 check let's go back a few moves if the black queen doesn't capture this bishop and instead decides to come on this square then white can now play b4 attacking the queen notice how this b4 pawn is being protected by our knight and the queen is left with no safe squares where it can go because all of the squares are under the control of white pieces so now the queen is forced to take this bishop and again white can play knight into c7 check king moves and black queen is lost now i will show you a queen trap in fork bear gambit so white starts with e4 you play e5 and white plays f4 this is a king's gambit and now instead of accepting this gambit you play d5 and that is the fork bear gambit white will mostly take your d5 pawn and here you will offer another pawn by playing c6 white will happily accept that and now you take back with your knight now white has the option of taking this pawn but if he does so then in the next move the black queen will come to this square giving a check to the white's king white will either have to block with g3 weakening his king side further or he will have to move his king to this square which will lead to loss of his castling rights so because he doesn't want to deal with this queen check white now plays knight to f3 controlling this square as well as double attacking this e5 pawn and now black plays e4 attacking the knight and now white plays knight to e5 centralizing his knight and attacking this knight over here and now black will play bishop to c5 the idea is to keep an eye on this weak f2 square and now white here will happily play bishop to b5 double attacking this knight over here and pinning this knight to the black king now ideally here he is expecting black to play a move like bishop to d7 so that it can unpin this knight and also add one more defense to this knight but rather what you will play now is knight to f6 now here white will think you have just overlooked the entire situation and has forgotten to protect your knight one more time because it's attacked two times by the white pieces and it's protected only once by your army so he will think you have made a horrible mistake so he would not mind capturing this knight over here so he plays knight into c6 you play b into c6 and now he plays bishop into c6 check forking your king and the rook and now you play bishop d7 and white now happily captures the a8 rook and thinks that he is going to be winning this game easily because he is up in material but here black surprises white with the move bishop to g4 notice this bishop is protected by black's knight and this bishop is now attacking the trapped queen over here there is no way that white can save his queen now and white is going to lose his queen in the next turn and black from here on can easily win this game if you want to learn more such traps in detail then do join the membership program of this channel let me show you a queen trap in the fire witch gambit so the game starts with d4 black plays knight to f6 white plays c4 and now black plays e5 luring white's pawn to take on the black's e5 pawn white takes and now the knight moves to e4 square and now here we have a couple of options that white can play white can either play f3 attacking this knight over here or it can play a3 to prevent black's bishop coming on this b4 square to check the white's king 
So let us look at the first variation and that is a3. So here since we want to capture white's queen, we will play a move which gets this queen out in the center of the board and that move is b6. By playing b6, we are enticing white's queen to come on the d5 square and fork our pieces. White obviously plays queen d5 and now here black plays a blunder looking move and that is bishop to b7. Obviously the white queen will take it and now black plays knight to c6. The idea is that we are closing this file for the white queen to escape as well as now this knight over here is controlling these two squares. Now obviously white over here is sensing something fishy and he doesn't want to take a risk and that is why he gets his queen out of this place by playing queen to a6. In this situation white's queen has safe access to this square, to this square and to this square. And now black starts to lay his trap and starts to take away these squares from the white's queen. So black plays knight to c5. So now out of these three squares the access to both these squares are gone because our knight is controlling these two squares and also the knight is attacking this queen. So the only square where the queen can now go to is the b5 square. So the queen moves to b5 and now white plays a6 attacking the queen one more time and believe it or not the queen is right now trapped. The queen cannot go to these two squares as they are under the control of white's knight. It cannot go to these two squares as well because these two squares are controlled by white's c6 knight. So the queen is trapped and now it is forced to take on c6 and you play d into c6 winning the whole queen. Now let's go back a few moves. So what if instead of a3 white would have played a normal developing move like knight to f3. So what change does this move make? Well this particular square will now be accessible to the white queen in the trap that we are setting up. So how do we take control of this square? Let's see. So as usual we will first start setting up the trap by playing a move like b6 inviting the white queen to come on this square and fork our pieces. So the white queen comes on this square and now we play bishop to b7 sacrificing our bishop. Queen takes and now we develop our other knight. And now the queen tries to run back to its home by playing queen a6 and here is the critical moment now. Because unlike earlier if we play the move knight to c5 over here attacking the queen then the queen has access to this a3 square and we don't want the opponent's queen to run to her home and get safe. So that is why here first we will play bishop b4 check. White will block the check with his bishop and now we will attack the queen with knight c5. Notice the queen doesn't have access to this square as it is controlled by our bishop. Queen is not safe on these squares as well because it's controlled by our knight and this square is also not under her control. So she is forced to come to the b5 square and now here before playing a6 we have to make sure that we don't lose our bishop for free. So first we will exchange so bishop into d2 check knight into d2 and now a6. Notice the queen doesn't have access to any of these squares. All of these squares are under black's control and now this lady is gone. Now let's go back a few moves and let's see another variation in which white plays f3 and attacks our knight. So white plays f3 and here black can play bishop b4 check. Obviously white will block this check with his bishop and here instead of focusing on taking this bishop over here black will give another check from another side of the board and that is queen h4 check. White is forced to block this check with g3 and here black takes the pawn with his knight and if white takes back then queen into g3 is a checkmate. Let's go back a few moves. So after black takes this pawn here if white decides to take away this bishop over here then knight e4 would again checkmate white's game. So so in short, if white decides to play f3, it's a horrible move for his game. Now let me show you the last queen trap and that comes in the Budapest Gambit. So the opening moves are similar to what we saw in the last trap. So the move starts with d4, black plays knight f6, white plays c4 and here black offers a free pawn at e5, white takes, black moves the knight to e4 square, white plays a3 to avoid bishop b4 check. And here black plays d6 and offers white another pawn for free. White takes and now black takes back with his bishop. Notice how this bishop is ready to give check to the white king at any of these squares creating a discovered attack on white's queen. And now here white plays a normal developing move like knight to f3 and now is the time to start our attack. 
So black plays knight into f2, forking white's pieces. White doesn't want to lose material, so the king takes the knight. And now bishop g3 check. Doesn't matter how white captures, whether by his pawn or by his king, because white is gonna lose the queen. Time for the question of the day. Here it is white's turn to move and you have to let me know in the comments box as to what move white should play. Should he play bishop c4 check or should he play bishop g6 check? Which would be the correct move for white? Let me know your answers in the comments box and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, keep learning, keep practicing.